Hey guys, just thought I'd do another inbox review for you out there, uh, especially for you Tiger Nuts out there. And as you all well know from my like previous posts, I have managed to get myself this little, rare little puppy um, at a very, very good rate, considering that the average price of this kit is normally about £199 if you want to buy one on eBay. Um, if you just reposition the camera because it's not securely in the Sorry about that guys, here we go. Um, damn, things are not sitting straight now. <laughs> you think you're prepared and then you're not. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, as I say, this is an extremely rare kit. Um, it's one that was uh, an early release of Cyber Hobby. Uh, I think around about 2006-2007. Uh, when all of their kits used to come with the dragon card and all the goodies. Unfortunately, um, now they're re-releasing a lot of uh, new kits at the same price, but with no of their goodies. And I have to say, I'm in total agreement with Mike in the fact that uh, I feel we're being given the, the uh, bums rush. Uh, I personally am of the opinion that it should reintroduce the dragon card along with all the goodies again and then that way you are getting a very good uh, kit all told. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from dragon, I mean some of their new releases are very good but guys you've got to get back to getting the dragon card in there. Um, it would increase your sales, let's just put it like that. But anyway, that's my rant over. Uh, as I say, this is one I have actually been after for the last two and a half years. Um, mainly because um, it's uh, a very well-known tank case uh, who unfortunately didn't survive the war. That was Michael Whitman, or Michael Wittman, as he's more commonly known. Um, he scored quite a run, I think it was around about 138 kills, um, 135 vehicles damaged, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but unfortunately was killed just after, during the Normandy campaign, um, by a lucky shot uh from um, a Canadian by the name of Elkins. Um, he caught the then 007 turret underneath, caught the ammunition, blew the turret off, and the, kill, the crew, including Fitman, were instantly killed. Um, so, there but go for the grace of God. Uh, but he was certainly well known, um, was used mainly by the Nazis as a propaganda vehicle. Um, but uh, he was a well-known and well-reputed tank case um, and very well tactical. His tactics were amazing. Um, I mean, he thought off, I think, around about 30 T-34s with his single stoop uh, during Operation Barbarossa, and that was the making of him. And then he made his real name with this first Tiger that he had, 1331, which was the early version, uh, during the Battle of, uh, I don't remember, Provkarovka, I think it was. And uh, also during Operation, the whole Operation, Operation Zitadel, which was the early stages of the Battle of Kursk in July 1943. Um... As I say, this is a very, very rare kit. The average price I've seen for this to buy on eBay is £199. Um, as I say, I came across this around about a week ago on eBay. Um, saw it initially at a price at £55. Um, hardly any bidders. I think there was only one other bidder or two other bidders. And I just kept watching and watching and watching and watching until the very last day. Put in two bids, the last being at 65, including postage, and I won it. And considering this normally goes at £199 to buy it, I think I did very well. Uh, as I say, it's jam packed with all the goodies, and if you want to get hold of one of these kits, if you keep your eye out, the kit number is 6350. That's 6350. Again, you've got the box art on the side here. On one side, you've got the CAD drawings of all the various parts of the kit, including the magic tracks. And 
again on the other side here as well and as I say unlike the new uh, releases today this does come with a metal aluminium barrel and then you've got the muzzle um, rake right here which shows you how to assemble that and various parts where you put your etched brass considering the uh, I think the tool engine deck or whatever it is as well I say this is jam packed so I mean I've did a previous video but it didn't come out too well and I'm just trying to keep this lid down is yeah a bit of a nightmare <laughs> and it is packed absolutely jam packed but as I say first thing I'm going to do is run through the instruction sheet so I'll just put this box aside again up here you've got the box art illustration with kit number 6350 Familiar sprue tree which you get in most dragon kits and now all the blue areas as I say are excess parts which you won't need with this kit and you can use them as a source of spares. In fact some of them I've used to cross kit on that various other kits. Um, then the first stage obviously is range through the colour call out again Mr Hobby but you can cross, re cross reference on the Holly Ho Hobby colour app again whichever brand you're using. First off is obviously the usual with the running gear, assembly, that's the idler wheel, sprocket and running wheels, okay. And then the next stage is to assemble all the uh, torsion bars inside, okay. Then add the swing arms, which you see there. And they're suggesting you add all the running gear. I ain't not doing that, don't make that mistake. Uh, I know Ben Frost across the road with his target, he did that. So, duly note, Ben, and many others out there, don't put your running gear on yet. Leave that until the very last stage of the build process. Otherwise, it's going to cause a nightmare and you're going to have problems. Um, again, it's showing you the assembly of the running gear. And on the back plate, it's telling you to cut various areas across here. Then you've got the assembly of the exhaust shrouds as well as the exhaust here. Um, again, yeah, I don't think on this one you can have it open or closed on this kit, unlike the most recent releases. And then obviously you've got the assembly of the actual tool arms, and they do come with extras on this kit. Okay, Add them to the back along with the rear fenders and the uh, tool box which goes on the back there. Then the assembly of the jack. And it's telling you on here with regard to the rear fenders, you've got to cut off certain parts where it's mentioned in blue. And then add all your etch brass to the rear um, tow bar um, box, as it were. Add your side plates onto the main hull. Then add all your uh, tanks and your engine decks, tanks and your uh, engine fans, etc. on the back there. Which is path, of course. And again, with the upper uh, deck, you know, I'll have the hatches open or closed. And it's just showing you there. Um, it's also telling you to cut off some parts along where the engine hatch is as well. And obviously you put on part of the FIFO system on the top there. Okay. And then you've got your uh, jacks there which you use to push the engine uh, uh, hatch up. Okay. That is a bit fiddly, I do warn you. I found this on my first Tiger build, so don't lose them. And then the assembly of the MG34, which goes on the inside of the frontal plate here, along with the driver's hatch, and you can have a clear part which you can put in through, if you should so wish. Okay, you can either have it as one unit, or you can do it separately. Okay, this is the assembly process for the uh, engine clamps, uh, the, well, the tool clamps, as it were, as most of them come in etched brass. Then you put your etch brass real covers over the engine deck covers, etc. And then add your tools along with the uh, clamps, your etch brass, again with the other tools as well. The assembly of the headlights, as you can see there, and this one comes with some bra well, etch brass um, cable as well. And obviously, you put all your mine uh, shooters on the side there as well. I don't do that now. It's the trouble is if you do it this way, you can end up flicking or damaging all these parts that get lost. Best thing to do is just put all the rear upper deck on um, to the main hole, 
then put all your tools on afterwards otherwise you're gonna have a nightmare okay um, that's something I've learned in my last two builds of the Tiger okay. again it's showing you the assembly of all the sub assemblies such as the tow ropes etc you can use extra metal brass which is actually inside the card which is probably what I'm going to use because it's more authentic and then obviously you've got the FIFO system filter system added with your FIFO filters there to the rear um, hoses goes onto the main deck of the vehicle along with the frontal armour okay and then obviously the next stage then is to assemble the barrel and the breech and the mantlet okay now you can either use the plastic part or you can use the aluminium with the assembly of the muzzle brake which you see there okay uh, next process after that as you can see here is the assembly of the turret itself along with the uh, shell cradle then you've got the commander's seat and obviously the loader's seat as well there's not much detail inside but if you want to add extra detail you can either get a Valinden set or scratch build it yourself okay so that's all added the upper part of the uh, turret is added etc along with the hatches again you've got the option of them open or closed okay then your final sub assembly such as the commander's cupola onto the top part of the turret along with the vision ports and then you've got the rear turret uh, bin which goes on you can have it open or closed um, then obviously you've got the assembly of all your spare tracks which go on the side of the turret here either side which did actually happen with Vitman's tank um, and then obviously everything is assembled together along with the tow ropes and then the assembly of the magic tracks which you see here Okay, so that's that. And then obviously we colour fill out. We've only got one option, which of course is 1331, which was Vitman's first tiger at the Battle of Kursk. Okay, and it shows you all four viewpoints, along with familiar 1331. So that's that. Right, come to the most interesting part, which is of course all the sprues now as i say you've got spare sprues in here for a late version as well as the version that you're depicting again this one is for the actual kit you've got the mantlet you've got the sprockets here engine hatch uh five full filters there uh part of the frontal drive there okay the final drive um what else have we got on here? Part of your mine launchers there as well. That's those. Um, again, with this sprue, this is a spare one. Um, it can go with any version. You've got the um, obviously the ammunition pack, which you there, which is nicely represented with the wood grain, which you can see. Uh, rear engine, uh, rear um, ammunition pack as well, which goes on the rear fit, rear um, plate. And then part of the actual turret bin, which you see there, part of your firefall pipes there, and filter system, okay. And this one is, again, uh, rear parts of the axial exhausts, tow bars, uh, part of your sprocket there, and then your final drive wheel, and there's your, final, sorry, that's your final drive there, and there your idler wheel there. Okay, the exhausts are right here. Our upper deck, as you can see there, beautifully produced. Okay, uh, along with, I uh, must admit, I even love where they've got all the, um, what do you call it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, then you've got your um, tool clamps, which you've got here for your uh, rear tow bars, plus your tow um, pipes as well for your, tar your, your gun turret. Okay, there's your tools, etc. Uh, on this sprue here, you've got your side plates. I think this is for a late version, I'm not sure. Uh, but again, you can use this as a spare source. Okay, rear plate there, as you can see. Again, you've got another uh, tool hatch there. Okay, uh, rear 
about that. Okay, I think that might be an initial actually. Oh, all right. If in case you're wondering what that's for, this bit here, that's to line up some of your magic tracks at the front and the rear. Okay. Again, you got the NA door shrouds right here. Uh, side fenders. Now, what I'll probably do is, if you notice on some tires, they had some of the fenders missing and they were bent. You can use a little mini drill to cause some of the bending on it and then just saw on the fenders that you don't need. There's your sprocket again. And you've got the antenna there. These are your torsion bars. And obviously part of the actual uh, barrel, which you can see here. Frontal armour. You've even got MG gun cover if you should so wish to have that. Again, you've got some more tools here. And more there, part of the pipe. Now these are the fivefold pipes, which you can see here, lovely grain detail. Uh, part of your tank system there. Wheels, there you go, as part of your running gear. Beautifully crisply moulded, as you can see. You've got your swing arms down there. Okay. I'll move some of the screws, because it's getting a bit packed on the bench here. One thing these dragon gets, you do get plenty of screws. Here you've got your fan blades, and here you've got your tanks there. And even you've got the wood grain on it, which is beautifully cut. I don't know if you can see this in this light, but you've got the wood grain in there. Now you don't often get that in most of the new releases, I have to say. There's your MG34 as well. Okay, can you see that guys? Good. Hatches, etc. As you can see, uh, there's your filter for your uh, fire for, uh, for your um, fans there. As your fire extinguisher, ends of the tow bars, which is used on the extra That's your jack. Uh, and then you've got another series, the sub assemblies of the gun breech, which you can see here. Okay. Um, there's a nice crisp detail on the front mantlet here as well. Beautifully done. Vision ports there, you've got the ports. And then onto here you've got the famous dragon card here with all your tool clamps, etc. and etch brass. Covers for the uh, fans. Vision ports there for your cards. Coupler, you've got your tow bars there. Which you can use. I think I'm going to use those. Spare tools again. Commander's Coupler and the familiar markings of 1331 for Zitman's Tiger. Okay, Oops, sorry, I've got the camera there. That's your spare tracks and more uh, torsion bars there. Engine covers, which you can see there, beautifully produced. Uh, magic tracks there, and you get one bag in these. Um, so I think they should come out pretty well. Uh, it's going to be laborious, but I'm going to give it a crack anyway. Here's your main hull, which is beautifully cast. Nice crisp details. I even love the weld seams they've got on this as well. That's what I was trying to get at earlier, was the weld seams on the upper deck. Okay. Up to Dragon's usual high standard. The only thing that I am disappointed with this kit in is the hub turret doesn't come in one piece. It comes in two halves. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a pain, especially with the seam line down the back. Other than that though, the detail on it is pretty good. Okay. And then obviously you've got the upper part of the turret right there. Okay. Again, you've got spares here for the mantlets, etc. Uh, I think this is for a late version. Another spare turret bin. Again, I think this is possibly for the late version. Frontal armour and driver's vision port, as you can see there. Rear plates, okay, so one you can use as a spare, and I'll put part of the armour there. More side armour, this is for a late version again, as you can see, and then you've got spare tow ropes right there, so there you go. And finally, last but not least, this is all your other spare uh, edge bras for your engine filter hatches, you've got your tow arms there. You've even got the antennae, which I'll probably more than likely use. Spring for the actual recoil on the gun. And your main beautifully cast metal barrel. So there you go. That is this kit in a nutshell. I'm not kidding you. It is absolutely jam-packed, as I say. Um, 
this is going to be fun trying to get all this lot back in here now. <laughs> uh, but I mean, for the amount I paid for it and the rarity of this kit, I think I did pretty damn well if I say so myself. Um, it's just a shame that Dragon or Cyber Hobby still don't do this. Um, you used to get a lot more for your money. So I'm trying to get everything in there, it's not going to be that easy. Um, which unfortunately these days you don't get. I mean the value, I mean the quality of the kit, yeah, second to none I will have to say. Um, yes they are quite complicated builds and they are really for the more experienced modeler, but um I might not get in there. <laughs> Can't get it all back in. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, you will get back in there. Come on. Oh get in there. Hang on. Bear with me a minute, guys. I'm having real fun and games here. They just pack so much into these kits. There we go. I think that's it. Let's put the instruction sheet on the top here. That's it left to do for now. I'll sort it out after this video. So there you go. This is um, drag. This is Cyber Hobby six three five zero Michael Vittman um, Tiger One Early Production. Um, I'm really pleased I got this kit. Um, it's going to be a real gem to have. Um, again, I've been very lucky to get it at the price I got it. I do give you a fair warning, guys. This kit now, if you manage to get hold of one, goes for ridiculous prices. Um, if you've got the money, you think you can afford it, get it. Uh, but again, I was very lucky. Uh, I was on one of those rare occasions when you can get a snip. So there you go. Anyway, much prized. Please, I've got it, and uh, I shall enjoy the build as and when I get around to building this puppy. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. So until the next time, get kick crazy, happy modelling, and I'll speak to you soon.